A new book being heralded as the first major biography of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in over a generation is making headlines and unveiling new details about the civil rights leader. The book draws on important news sources, including hundreds of original interviews, thousands of recently released FBI documents, and an unpublished memoir written by King's father. Joining me now is journalist and New York Times bestselling author Jonathan Eig. His new book, King, A Life, is out this Tuesday. Um, I'm going to call you Jonathan, since we're both Jonathans. Uh, Mr. Eig, thank, thank you, you very Jonathan. much for coming to the Saturday show. Your last book, Ali, A Life, examined the life of Muhammad Ali. What made you decide to make Dr. King your next subject? Well, first of all, in working on my Ali book, I was meeting people who knew Dr. King, and it just kind of blew my mind. And out of curiosity, I began asking people like Dick Gregory and Harry Belafonte and Andrew Young and Jesse Jackson, what was he like? What was it like to be around Martin Luther King Jr.? And that's when it occurred to me that we'd really softened his image over the last 25, 30 years, especially since the national holiday was created. You know, we've softened Dr. King to the point that you wouldn't recognize his real radical nature. You wouldn't realize, recognize just how courageous he was and how complicated he was. You know, he suffered. He, he went through moments of sadness. He struggled with whether he was doing the right thing. I wanted to see if I could write a book that would make you feel like you knew him in the way that Dick Gregory mm. and Andrew Young and Harry Belafonte knew him. And, and on, to that point, you've said when we make men like King into myths, we do them a dis disservice. Um, so talk about how you included aspects of King's humanity and flaws in order to fully paint the portrait of his life. I think there's no question that King is big enough that we can handle uh, accepting the fact that he had flaws. He was important enough. He was brave enough. He accomplished so much. I think he's the greatest activist in American history. So let's be honest about the fact that he doesn't. He wasn't perfect because we don't have to be perfect. None of us are perfect, and we if we expect our our heroes, we. If we expect people to be perfect before they stand up to lead, we're never going to find anybody to lead us. So, yes, um, I wanted to acknowledge that King suffered. He may have suffered from depression. He certainly was hospitalized numerous times for anxiety. He struggled with fidelity in his marriage. But that's not what's important. In fact, when it comes to the new revel revelations about his, his extramarital affairs, what's important is the way the FBI weaponized his, his personal life to try to destroy him and undercut the civil rights movement. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. Any trepidation? I mean, as a as a writer, um, I, you know, sometimes we write about subjects or things where part of the calculation in the writing is, wow, how is this going to be received? How is this going to go over? Any trepidation on your part, writing a, a book like this, because I, ha I have it right here, writing a book like this where you are taking on such a revered figure? I have those trepidations with every book I write, um, you know, Lou Gehrig, Jackie Robinson, um, Muhammad Ali, because you're taking someone's life in your hands and you don't know this mm -hmm. person. So there's a certain arrogance that comes with writing any biography, but that just makes yeah. me work harder. And certainly in the case of someone like Dr. King, who is, you know, a sainted figure who is revered so widely and deservedly, uh, I felt like I had to do extra work. I had to really get the cooperation and the help of the people who knew him best and the experts in the field who were incredibly supportive, people who've been studying King their whole lives, really uh, propped me up and taught me. Mm. So I um, I just felt like because of King's great, um, his, his great significance, his iconic status, I just had to work harder to get it right. All right, let's talk about some details. One of the revelations included in the book is that uh, Dr. King's statements to Playboy magazine about Malcolm X, where he accused, the, the, um, accused Malcolm X of fiery demagogic oratory appears to have been fabricated. How much do you think this revelation should force us to reconsider the unconventional, the, the, sorry, the conventional understanding of the relationship between King and X? It's a huge discovery. I was shocked because um, we have read for decades, for generations, that King said that he considered Malcolm's fiery oratory a damaging to, to the cause, damaging to the people. And that quote was entirely made up. It was fraudulent. And in fact, the, the transcripts of that interview, and one of the things I do routinely is when I find a long interview with one of my subjects, I go to the notes, I try to find the tapes. And the notes in this case indicated that King never said that. And what he actually said was that I realize that I may not have all the answers. Malcolm and I certainly disagree on the issue of violence, but I'm open to learning from Malcolm and, and, and understanding him better. So King was much more open-minded. And this is one of the great things about King. When there were people he disagreed with, like Stokely Carmichael, he wanted to talk to them. 
He wanted to hear them out. He wasn't looking to just cast them aside because they disagreed. He was he was the greatest of leaders in part because he listened. You know, um, the, the book also examines thousands of new FBI documents that were recently released in connection to the FBI's surveillance operation against King. What did what did you glean from those new documents? Well, first of all, the attacks on King were much um, harsher and more frequent than we than we realized. The FBI was determined not just to destroy King's reputation, to destroy his marriage, even to push him to suicide. They were really driven to try to divide and conquer the entire civil rights movement. There was a feeling that if the black population united behind any one leader, that the white power structure would be in trouble. And King was seen as the most likely man to unite that community. So the, the attacks were vicious. And it was not just J. Edgar Hoover. Um, as we have commonly um, written the story. In fact, um, LBJ was far more complicit in the, uh, in the investigation oh. against King than we knew. He was not just um, informed weekly, personally, directly from Hoover. He was actually encouraging the, interroga the, um, the investigations, the surveillance, the wiretaps, the hotel room surveillance. Um, and the news media, too, uh, bears some responsibility because they knew what Hoover was doing and didn't report it.